But now the whole climate changed when he got tossed in jail. And it came to pass. Get me. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 11, we'll start at verse 1. When he got in jail, he ain't talking about prepare a highway for nobody. <laughs> climate change. Atmosphere change. That's right. Uh, the prison was not a beautiful wilderness scenery. No. Look at the change of mind of the prophet now. Same Why? The circumstance changed. Right. Get this. St. Matthew chapter 11, we'll start at verse 1. What is it? And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, uh -huh. he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Yes. Now when John had heard in the prison. When John heard... No more in the wilderness now? No. No more eating wild locusts and honey? Oh, no. Not that now? No. Different climate, different atmosphere, different diet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, when John had heard in the prison that what? the works of Christ, the works of Jesus, he sent two of his disciples. And what happened? And said unto him, Art thou he that should come? Wait a minute. This is after John was preaching. Right. He's no longer in the wilderness now, but his mind now. <laughs> Trouble. Trouble. You know, you're pretty happy when you're not behind bars. Oh, yes. And everything is going good. Able to eat when you want to. Come and go as you please. Yeah. Sometimes we take peace and comfort for granted. That's right. Wherein the mistake that's made from millions of God's people. Mm -hmm. When things are going well in your life and your prayers is being answered yeah. and you're spiritually comfortable, mm -hmm. you become careless. And your servitude towards God. And you become careless so much, so long, until when something do happen, you're so spiritually out of shape. Right. When you're spiritually out of shape, circumstances now cause more damage true. to your soul than it would have caused if you would have been spiritually prepared when things was nice and calm as if things was in an uproar. That's right. In other words, you should not allow your circumstance to change for you to change in your service you render to God. That's right. You should already be prayerful. Yeah. Don't wait for trouble. That's right. Already, thank God, be fasting. Trouble should not be the motivator. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Already crying out to God for uh, hallelujah. 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 For deliverance and for help. Hmm. Oh, so Jenner, suppose I don't feel I need to be delivered from anything then you're living a life of deception that's right because that's the right. thing you need to be delivered from is yourself amen how you think and how you feel and how you act so as a result of that climate of calmness and spiritual satisfaction we have became spiritually out of shape. Out of shape. No more lifting prayers towards heaven. That's right. Which caused our spiritual side to become weak. Yeah. You know, your blessings that God gives you are not designed to make you weak. No. They make you weak how you handle them. That's right. God don't bless you for you to get comfortable and lay back. No. God bless you to make you more humble so you can go forward and 
the things of God so you can get more blessings. That's right. Think of it as being in the military, in war. Whenever you are assigned to take over a certain area because the enemy took it over, you got to take that hill. You got to take Hamburger Hill back. That's right. You're out there for days, weeks, months. Many are getting killed all around you. Yeah. But your commander said, hold that line. That's right. Bodies are dropping. Sometimes they call in. I need air support. We can't do it right now. Yeah. That's but we lost so many hundreds. Hold that line. Hold the line. That's Then your captain come and tell me have a meeting with you. General said we got to hold that line. But captain, get in your place, private. That's right. Come on. We haven't slept. That's right. Go with to God. Come on, Jake. Right. Don't have no food. No. But what are the orders? Hold that line. Hold that line. That's right. So now all the troops yeah. have to discipline themselves right. to hold that line regardless if they have no water, no food, and no support. So what does that battle do? It either breaks them that's right. Or makes them. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Now, God come along. Same attitude. Yeah. Hold that line. He tell us to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And what is the line? He's telling us to hold that plumb line. That's right. Because it's in the midst of the people. And he's not moving that plumb line. It's straight. straight. Because he's constructing, he's building a people, and there's no angles. Oh, give me issue whatsoever. So many of us. certain circumstances because when things were smooth, uh -huh. nice, right. happy-go-lucky, yes. we allowed ourselves to get spiritually out of shape, That's right. not praying as much, not fasting as much, That's right. not seeking the Lord as much, yeah. and the more spiritual shape you be out of shape out you of become, shape the more kernel-minded you become. That's right. So now your approach towards things should be from the advice of God, but instead you take matters in your own hands, and when you do that, you make every situation worse. Amen. Why? Because now you're spiritually out of shape. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. The holy book says what? Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ. When John heard in jail the things that Christ done. He sent two of his disciples. He sent two of his followers. And said unto him, Art thou he that should come? Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Ah. Hmm. This is the same John that preached Jesus. That's right. But now I'm in jail. I want to do a reevaluation. <laughs> Amen. This is after he baptized Jesus. Oh, yeah. He witnessed the heavens open and the Holy Ghost come in the bodily shape of a dove and lighted upon the Son of Man. That's right. He heard that excellent voice spoke from heaven, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. He witnessed all of that. All of it. Right when he's in trouble. Art thou he that should I come? I ain't think about no dove. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Never mind, I ain't think about no Jordan. <laughs> no. And I'm not, my mind is not on no voice speaking from heaven or anywhere else. That's right. Do you see yourself in the scripture? Amen. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. When things are going well in your life, that's not the time. To put this down. This trust not the fear of the Lord. Do what? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 28. What did it say? This trust not. This trust not. The fear of the Lord. The fear of God. When thou art poor. When you're poor. And come not unto him. Don't come to him. With a double heart. Don't come to him with an emotional split. That's right. Hallelujah. Hear me. You got a double mind. That's right. And you got a double heart. That's right. A double mind brings about a double heart. That's it. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's right. A double hearted person is unstable in all their feelings. That's right. Glory yeah. to God. That's right. God wants us to be one. Amen. Be not an hypocrite. What? Be in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 now at verse 29. When I say when things are going well, don't put this down. I'm not talking about the physical book. No. I'm talking about God's agenda, God will in your life. You know, a lot of time people, they start out working out and then, you know, <laughs> they be like, true. man, I know I need to work out. All in the mirror looking at yourself. Uh, I need to work out, but I'm tired. Does that sound like some of us? Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Look at that same concept, touching the development of your soul. That's right. I know I need to pray. I know I need to fast. I know I need to go to church more. I know I need to deny myself, but go ahead. there's always a but. That's right. Why you make excuses? That's right. Then they have said, I'm not making an excuse, but when you hear the explanation, it's nothing but an excuse. Amen. Amen. When things are well in your life, let your approach towards God be as if things are miserable in your life. That's right. That's what I'm telling you. Keep that mindset. That's right. Fasting. Glory. Hallelujah. Praying. Seeking God. Yeah. Don't look at how nice things are now. Don't do that. No. Keep the same objective, same goal, same press. Yes, so when things do get out of place in your life, like the thigh of Jacob, yeah. you already have become spiritually conditioned. Until when that thing get out of place, now you're ready to step up to the plate. That's right. That's true. And you can handle it Wonderful. without Wonderful. it handling you. Amen. Amen. Are you getting the old man? Distrust not the fear of the Lord. Distrust not the fear of God. When thou art poor. When you're poor. And come not unto him with a double Don't heart. Don't come to God. Split emotion. That's why he said, choose ye this day. That's right. Whom you going to serve? And then he says again, no man can serve two masters. Yes. You're going to hate one and love the other. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you will. So when you got a double-minded person, you got a person that's double in heart. That's right. And that man or woman is unstable in all their ways mentally. And in all the emotions also. That's right. That's why you find some folk in church, out of church. In church, out of church. Be, they, they, they're out there in the world for several months, come back to the Lord. Back out there in the world again, come back to the Lord. You know why? Because their heart is split. Heart is split. They're wrestling with two loves. That's right. Loving God and loving the world. Yeah. yeah. They're wrestling with two minds. Yeah. Giving a mind to God 
and given a mind to the world. That's right. So their body, which is the temple, is split. Split. And God don't want a split house. Oh, no. no, he doesn't. Why? The word of God says a house divided against itself. It can't stand. Not stand. Glory be to God. Amen. When you are divided, hmm. want to be world and God. That's right. The spiritual side of yourself ain't going to stand. No. Because somebody's going to pull the other. Oh, yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Get me. Be not an hypocrite. Who you hear this? Now in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 29. Don't be a faker. In the sight of men. In the sight of men. And take good heed. Pay attention. When thou speakest. Amen. Don't be a faker. Don't be a, you say right. you're walking with God, then don't let the world see something else. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's true. Amen. Amen. The world already want to get something on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not looking at you struggling. They don't know nothing about that. No. The world ain't looking at you struggling. The world ain't looking at what you're going through. They're looking at what you profess. That's right. They don't care nothing about you weak. All they know, they see that sister going to church with dresses and whatnot, and then come on out with jeans. Yeah. He's all the world looking at you, see that sister wear her hair natural when they come to church and then got on somebody else's hair from Walgreens when she go to work. That's right. That's all the world looking at. That's it. And in the eyes of men, what did the Bible say? Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men. That's true. The world see that brother, you know, going to work and whatnot. With his shorts on and shirt button all down the summer, showing the gray hairs on his chest, yeah. half out there, half naked, cussing and smoking. Yeah. And then see him on the telecast singing, My, mine, mine. Jesus is mine, mine. That's right. Come on, kid. That's true. Well, see you passing reef around to each other. Then the camera hit your face. They were like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, man. I just bought, just bought a bag from him. <laughs> Get me what I'm telling you. Amen. I want to take my time and soak you. Oh, yeah. That's right. Holy Ghost said. Be not an hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. In the sight of in men. In the sight of men. And take good heed when thou what thou speakest. Pay attention what come out of your mouth. Exalt not thyself. Yeah. Amen. You see, you build yourself up. Oh, I ain't gonna never fall. Mm. With no experience. That's right. I can endure anything. Mm. And you can't take it when someone roll their eyes at you. That's right. You know, a lot of us are lightweight church people. Yeah. What you mean lightweight? Little kindergarten stuff you yeah. can't endure. Yeah. You can't endure somebody not speaking to you? What's the big deal? That's right. Well, I spoke to them. All right, get over it. They didn't speak to you. Get over it. That's right. That's right. They roll their eyes at me. All right, join the eye rolling club. <laughs> That's right. I extend my hand out. They just looked at me. Then extend the other one out to somebody else. Amen. That little lightweight folly. Lightweight. That's right. That's not even hardness. The Bible says endure hardness. Ha hardness. That's lightweight. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You can't endure foolish, lightweight, childish stuff like that. You know you ain't ready to die for this. No way. That's right. You are denied God more than Peter did. Yeah. Peter did it thrice. You may do it three million times to stay alive. That's right. Think of it. You can't take it to someone. You stand your arm out, they didn't shake it. Think of it. You speak to them. I want you to hear me good. You speak to them, you didn't get no response. Yeah. You spoke to them, they roll their eyes. You spoke to them, they look at you like you're from Zombiesville. That's right. They walk right by you, didn't speak. That's right. You're affected by it, all broken up, all angry. 
over that trivial kindergarten preschool stuff. Amen. Amen. What would you do if you got to give your head in behalf of this? My Lord, my Lord. You are deny God. That's right. Because if you can't judge a small matter, the word of God says you cannot judge a large. That's right. That's why you hear me pounding on you got to grow in this, wherein the trivial, childish matters don't phase you no more than an ant that's smaller than a mustard seed. Amen. Now, which will bother you more? An ant the size of a grain of sand or a cockroach the size of a tractor trailer? Mm. Cockroach that big gonna bother me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you see where I'm driving? Amen. When a thing is small, then let it be that. Yeah. Small. small. Don't make it bigger than what it is. That's right. Just look at it for what it is. Small, childish, foolish, it's not worth my attention, not worth my time. But instead, we what become mentally and emotionally preoccupied. Yeah. And when we become preoccupied in that manner, it's a distraction for what we could be doing, indulging ourselves That's right. in the things of God. That's right. When you come before God. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. And verse again. Back in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. I want to teach us one. how to give God service. Service. When you come. If thou come to serve the Lord. If you come to serve God. Prepare thy soul. Do what? Prepare thy soul. Are you ready? For temptation. Prepare. Oh, a lot of you, you come to serve the Lord, but you ain't ready to be tempted by nothing. Right. That's why when you are tempted and fall in it, you fall apart. Oh, how can I do this? Wait a minute. I, I, I thought I was stronger than the Jolly Green Giant. Wait a minute. But I'm speaking in tongues. Shinoko, 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 Shinoko. <laughs> hey, Amen. That's right. Gas station tongues. <laughs> hey, Amen. Amen. Ah, what did you do? You overestimated yourself. That's right. That's right. Do you hear the Bible says? My son, if thou come. If you come. To serve the Lord. What you got to do? Prepare thy soul. Many of us came to serve the Lord, but we wasn't prepared for nothing else. That's right. That's right. That's right. You just repented, got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, sought the Lord for the Holy Ghost, and made noise. That's <laughs> true. Now prepared Not for prepared. no temptation. That's right. None. That's right. You thought serving God would be a walk in the park. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> huh? God in service and God happy. Snorkel, 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 snorkel. Amen. That's shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> That's right. Shake, rattle, and roll. I ain't prepared to endure prepared. nothing. That's true. That's true. That's true. The true test of your spiritual walk yeah. is endurance. Oh, yes. The manifestation of your strength is when you endure. That's right. The manifestation of your weaknesses is when you endure. Yeah. When something as small as not a handshake or mm. not a someone didn't speak to you or uh, walk right by you and you they saw you standing there, when something like that gets you bent out of shape, <laughs> when you just, even if you just get angry over it, you're spiritually out of shape. That's right. Because people walk by you every day. <laughs> That's right. That's true. When they walk by you, you got your hand out, and they walk by, all right. All right. Go to the next one. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Hey, man. That's right. Don't be. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, okay, I get you next. Wait, 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 wait. Come on back. Oh. That's not hardness. No. Something as light as that 
is heartless to you, something is wrong with you. That's right. You're not spiritually, uh, you wasn't spiritually exercising yourself. That's right. What do you mean? You got to lift some prayers up to God and fasting up to God, which will build you up spiritually. And you have to do this when things are nice, right, smooth in your life, not wait. Till your back is against the wall. Then you want to pray out of it. <laughs> That's right. Be already prayerful. Yeah. So when your back do get against the wall, yeah. you can rejoice wise there. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. Remember when Ali was fighting Foreman? He got on the ropes. What did he do? He used the ropes to his advantage. Yeah. And you know what he started doing? He called Foreman. That's right. Foreman had no idea that he used the ropes to build up his personal strength. Yeah. He was resting. Foreman was fighting like King Kong. What? Ali was just leaning there. That's right. <laughs> Resting. Resting. Spiritual stamina will get you spiritually equipped where even when you face with the problem, you're able to rest on it. Yeah. Are you listening? That's right. What do you mean rest on it? The situation can be tough, but mentally and emotionally, and spiritually, you'll remain intact. Amen. Where the situation don't dismantle you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can lean on it. See the devil coming? Yeah. What am I leaning on? Leaning on God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hell. That's who I'm leaning on. That's right. I'm leaning on God. Blessed be the name of God. Do you get what I'm talking? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What did the Holy Ghost say here? My son. Church. If thou come to serve if the Lord. If you come to serve God. Prepare thy soul. Prepare. Amen. Prepare. How do I prepare? Through knowledge. That's right. When you're on the receiving end of the lessons of God, it's preparing your mind, your heart, your That's body, right. your spirit. That's right. To be tempted. Wisdom raineth down skill. Do you hear this? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 19. What do wisdom bring us? Wisdom raineth down skill. When you get the word of God being preached, skill is being rained upon you. That's right. That Hallelujah. you may become spiritually talented, mm. spiritually skillful. That's right. Knowing how to handle any situation that comes in your life without that situation drowning you yeah. in life. Mm. I said any situation. That's right. Did you hear what I said? That's right. You name one situation Wonderful. that God can't bring you through. Hallelujah. Name Hallelujah. one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. bringing me through it and bringing me out of it, right. two different things. That's right. He can bring me through it. I'm still in it. Still in it. But he's with me in such a way I'm not affected while I'm in it. That's right. Bring me out of it. I no longer am dealing with it. Two different things. Amen. Example. The three Hebrew brothers was in fire. He didn't take them out the flame. No. But he took the hurt out the flame. Yes. That's right. While they was there. While they were there. They were still in the flame. That's right. But the Lord appeared. That's right. 
and they could no longer feel, they couldn't feel the pain or the pain of the flame. They couldn't feel it. Couldn't feel it. Because he took the hurt out of it. That's right. They was in the trial, but the trial was not in them. Yeah. All right, listen. Amen. The Apostle Peter said, thinking that strange concerning the fiery trial, which is just to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But then he stepped in and said, but rejoice. rejoice. That alone, that alone. who rejoices rejoice. while they're going through a trial? Hallelujah. Amen. Is it possible? Yes. Amen. Because if you've been spiritually working out before the problem came, when it do come, it won't have that intense effect that it normally would have if you wasn't spiritually in shape. That's right. So now, what you got to do, now while you Dealing with the matter, singular, or matters, plural. Now you got to get in shape. Yeah. Work out. <laughs> Do you hear this? In the book of Philippians chapter 2 and at verse 12. Where, what of God says? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed. Yes. Not as in my presence only. By the way. But now much more in my absence. What do we have to do, Williams? Work out. Work out. Your own salvation with fear and trembling. We got some working out to do. Oh, yeah. Some exercising. Exercise. Yeah. I want to say, well, the Lord's going to work it out. That's nice, but you got some working out to do. That's right. That's right. You don't want to keep coming to church and you see no spiritual growth in yourself. That's right. You keep coming to church, hearing the word of God, and you see no spiritual improvement in yourself, you have no one to blame but you. Amen. Amen. You mean to tell me I can't endure no more now than I could 15 years ago? What mm. in the world I've been doing all these years? Yeah. You mean to tell me I'm, I'm getting upset over the same small, trivial nothing today that I was 20 and 25, 30 years ago? There's no spiritual maturity in you. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? The word of God says, work out your own salvation. Don't worry about nobody else's. Amen. That's right. Your own. Work out your own. Work out your own salvation. Salvation. With fear. Be fearful. And trembling. And tremble. That's right. What else? For it is God which worketh in you. Hallelujah. It is God that work in you. Both, both to, will to will and to do. What do he want us to do, William? Of his good pleasure. God, good pleasure, tastes bitter. Oh yes. To the flesh. Oh yes. But it's good for you. That's oh, right. Yes. That's right. I often make the comparison example when I was a child, my mother used to give all of us castor oil yeah. and olive oil. Yeah. You ever think about something to give you the chills? <laughs> My mother used to give us that olive oil and cast oil. Ah, mm. nasty. Oh, yeah. Now they got it in capsules, more tolerable. <laughs> Keeps the cold out your system. Right. Good for you. Good for you. Then my mother used to give us some medicine. I call it the mark of the beast medicine. Three sixes. <laughs> then you had that medicine called Father John. Father John. Yeah. All that old remedy. Uh -huh. Nasty. But it worked. It worked. So the word of the Lord can be painful. Oh, yes. But it works. Oh, yes. Don't wait for things to be comfortable in your natural life before you have to get in the dugout of prayer. That's right. Get in the trenches. Yeah while things are peaceful. Get in the trenches when you don't feel the bombs and you don't feel the intense heat from Satan. 
get in the trenches anyway. That's right. As if you're in the worst battle under the sun. Amen. So when the battle do take place, you have already conditioned yourself yeah. for that war. For that war. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Right. Are you getting this? Back in Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, if you come to give God service, prepare thy soul. You know, Amen. in the old time, when they prepared themselves and made up in their mind to repent and humble themselves, mm -hmm. it was a common act that when someone had a broken and contrite heart and wanted to humble themselves in the mighty hand of God, they'd take their clothes, That's their right. garment, garments, and they'd rent it That's or right. tear it That's right. outwardly. That's right. Right. Which was an example of one humbling themselves. That's right. God don't want you to tear your garment now. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, and we'll start at verse 12. Let me show you what God wants. Start at verse 11, Williams. At, at verse 11. Yes. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. The Lord hmm. shall speak before his army. For his camp is very great. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Ah! Hallelujah. Hmm. That alone give me encouragement. Hallelujah. That lets me know the devil can't whip God. That's right. Hallelujah. His army is very great. Very great. Very yes. great. Uh -huh. For he is strong. He is strong. That executeth his word. That execute his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. What else? And who can abide it? Who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord. Listen at what God advises. us. Turn ye even to me with Turn. all your heart. You that have not repented of your sins, God wants you to get ready to prepare your heart. Right. Repent of your sins. Be yeah. sorry about your wickedness. Yeah. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the false religion, false church you're in. Yeah. Been there too long. Yeah. Preacher took your money just so you can die and go to hell afterwards. That's true. Been there too long. Anybody want to get right with God? They have prepared themselves. They want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet if you want it today. Wonderful. 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 You that are standing, follow that brother right there. Follow that brother right there. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Hallelujah. We done ran the streets too long. Yeah. Been out there in the world too long. Yeah. Smoking, partying, drinking. Wearing your mini skirts and your splits everywhere. And shaking your half naked, dislocated hips. Shaking the fake ones and the real ones. Amen. Ha. I thought of my oldest brother, Tony. Tony is so comical. Years ago, when I was little, he came home from a party cutting up. He said, man, I was at a party dancing with this girl. <laughs> and next thing I know, her hip slid down. <laughs> my Lord. They were shaking her hips so hard, her hip slid down. My Lord. You see, I told her your hips is fall. <laughs> right. <laughs> Glory to God. What? <laughs> well, That's your right. hips is real or fake? That's right. You better take them things to the water. Yeah. Right. Right. Ready to get baptized. Oh, Use yeah. them for life rafts. Oh. <laughs> yeah. right. Get your soul right, human yeah. family. That's it. Make your preparations to meet God. You atheists out there? Yeah. 
Your unbelief, you can believe the sun do not rise or set. Notice your unbelief do not change the activity of the heavens. No. God is still God. That's true. That's right. And your unbelief won't stop him from being God. That's right. All right. May God keep you. May God preserve you. God give us all something good. Come on back at 5 o'clock to my traveling department. I want to meet with you today at 4 o'clock, my overseas travel department, 4 o'clock and my conference room, please. Let us all stand. Elder Williams will close us out in prayer. Father God, we do come to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you and praise you again for your word. We thank you, Father God, for the man of God. We thank you how you preach through him. My God, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to hear the truth of thine gospel. Now bless us and help us not only to be hearers, but bless us to be doers of the scriptures. My God, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've been to us and for, for all that you've done for us. My God, remember those as yet waiting for the Holy Ghost. Bless them that they may continue to call upon your name. Help them to be obedient unto thee. My God, that they may be filled with thine spirit. My God, strengthen the man of God, continue to bless him and protect him and help him. My God, we thank you for everything that you've been to us. 